okay, should probably make sure that's actually turned on and it is, so that's a good start. And we're live. Welcome along to the live stream. If you've not joined us before, welcome to Adorama Live. I'm Gavin Hoey. I am one of the presenters right here on Adorama and this is fully live. Anything can go wrong, anything, everything will go wrong in the next hour, unless you're watching the recording, in which case, this is the recording. Hello, recording people. Say hello in the comments. And I think we've got a few people in the comments. I saw some go by, which is pretty good. So we're going to be doing some photography. But before we do that, let me introduce you to some of the people we've got. You can't see because a cable failed just before we went live, but you can hear if we remember to turn Sam's microphone on. Sam's in the room doing the comments. Hey, everybody. Can we There's hear her? so many people here. Um, would you like to know where everyone's from? I would. Okay. Hang on. Where's the little on off button? No, it is on. You are on. I am. Okay. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to check I that. I think they're trying to mute me, guys. Help, help. <laughs> so we've got uh, Denmark, Argentina, Sweden. We've got a lot of people from Sweden today. That's great. Uh, Belgium. We've got uh, Venezuela. Uh, we've got ooh, Los Angeles. That sounds, sounds fabulous. Netherlands. They're everywhere. That's Absolutely fantastic. everywhere. Thank you so much for putting where you're from. I hope you enjoy the show. The show? That's bigged it up a it bit, is isn't the it? Show. The show. <laughs> is yeah. it a show now? Okay. Uh, Sam is not on her own either. She has not Freya on the Super Switcher because Freya is out watching some band, some beat combo band playing some popular music I don't understand because I'm way too old. So she's not here, but we do have Trainee Ben. Ooh. Give it up for Trainee Ben. Ben, press number, press number four. There he is. <laughs> we should have had a camera. The camera didn't work, so there is a still photo of Trainee Ben. Woo! Say hello to Ben in the comments. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, let's get cracking. We've got a lot to get through. We're going to be doing portraits with attitude. Not actually portraits, but lighting. I mean, we're going to be doing portraits as well, but it's the, hopefully the lighting that's going to add to the attitude. This is live. This should be fun. So I'm going to start with one light and then we'll do a few other techniques, as many as we can in the next hour. However, you need to be joining in. So if you've got a question, stick it in the comments. I mean, it's probably a bit early now, but you know, if you've got a question when we get going that's relevant to what we're doing, Sam will read out the best of them and fire them over to me. So kit wise, let's start there. Kit, I'm using a Flashpoint Explore. 300 Pro and a 12 to 36 inch strip box. So that's going to be my key light for the first little session. And we've got a few other lights to play with as well. You'll find links to everything I'm using in the video description below. But of course, having a light isn't much use unless you've got an awesome model. And today we have. Give it up for the amazing Jared. Come on in, Jared. Jared's going to be the model for this photo session. Looking very dapper as well. Actually, make, putting me to shame. I should have thought this through a little better. So Jared's going to be our model for this session. We're going to be doing uh, sort of male portraits with a little bit more of a, a kind of attitude, but really that doesn't matter whether it's a male or female. It's just attitude lighting. And we're going to start with something really simple. I'm going to show you a few basic techniques. Should we just get on with it? Should we just get on with it? Let's do that. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions for Jared as we go through, He'll have a microphone, you can ask him, and he really wants to talk to you. <laughs> really excited. Okay, so first things first, what's the first picture we always take here on Adorama TV? We, we always do this picture for a very good reason. It is no flash, no picture. That's absolutely essential, and today is no different. So I'm gonna switch my camera to manual mode, so I've got control of everything. I'm gonna dial in some default settings. My flash sync speed, 250th of a second. I mean, that's all changing. Did you see this Sony A9 Mark III? Oh boy, whole new set of rules about to happen, I think. So 250th of a second, let's go f5.6, why not? And ISO 200, a question already, seriously, is it why, why am I doing this? <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, okay. Just commenting on the difference in the height. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Jared's got really built up platform shoes and I'm standing in it. It's actually, we've straightened it out in the video, but the whole studio leans a little bit as well. So. As Dave said, blimey, he's huge. Uh, Rob, that's a tall dude. Hang on, uh, no, no, no. We're at the same height. <laughs> but Matt's got the right attitude there for you. Is Jared eight feet tall? Yes, yes. He is. I mean, because we all know Gavin is at least six foot. Right. <laughs> Jared was rejected from the UK basketball team for being too tall. Yeah. Disadvantage, they said. It wouldn't be fair on the other players. Right, okay, so let's take a picture. No flash. 
Here we go. I'm not the way Jared, you're already posing. This is going to be a great picture. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, it's going to give us this. Ta-da! Now, it's not quite no flash, no picture, because we have really intensely bright studio lights, so you can actually see it. But the, the important part of this, Jared, is basically black. The wall, less so. We'll get to that in a second. No flash, no picture. Great. We've got control of the room. Let's get going. So, I'm going to dial in... Actually, I don't know. Let's go for the middle of the range power. One sixteenth power. Jared, if you'd just like to turn and face the wall. So, I've got Jared. Can you notice he's not standing in front of the light. It's off to the side. I want to light Jared with a little bit of attitude. Blimey, Jared, you're taller than I remember. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. That's, that's probably better. Try to get most of your light above your subject's head. Otherwise, you have Halloween lighting. And we missed that. That was last week. So, quick little test photo. Here we go. Total guess on the exposure, but experience in the studio really helps. Oh boy, well, I mean, would you put that in your portfolio? That was a yes, you can't see, oh you can see him, yeah. He said, oh my goodness, that's the best picture. That's a terrible picture, sorry, I'm really sorry. We've got to make this, this a lot better. Jared, we're going to make it better. If you can just stand so you're directly in line with the light. So I'm going to step Jared closer towards me. I'm going to get my step ladder. Here we go. Okay, so I've stepped Jared a little closer towards me. And we get that. That's definitely better. Jared, another step towards me. The closer he steps towards me, the better this lighting is going to become as far as attitude becomes. Because, have a look at this. Can you see how that changed the picture? Now, I haven't actually changed my flash exposure because Jared really isn't getting that much closer or further from the light. But just by stepping from one side to the other, so now he's kind of, he's the other side. He's, he's gone over there. So he's that far, hang on a minute, is that far, that far away, roughly the same width as your screen. It's a great joke last time, I'm doing it again. <laughs> so roughly one screen width away from the, uh, the light. There was a question, I saw Sam waving at me. Yes. Uh, actually, a lot of love for Jared, of course. Um, there is a question for you that says, um, what made you want to get into modeling? You look like a natural. That's from Chris. Oh. Well, you do that. I'll the so, line. what got me into modelling was um, it was actually whilst I was at university studying architecture. Um, a photography student just asked if I could help out on their portfolio. I was flattered, and I, I, well, that's what I did. And then they just sort of, I guess the, I guess this, they just carried on from there. To be honest, it just like, uh, you know, set up, set up in it. Yeah, sure thing. It's a dangerous moment coming. <laughs> Um, yeah, to set up an Instagram page and just network myself out, sort of, in, in and around my area. And yeah, I think one thing led to another, and here I am now. <laughs> the pinnacle of your career. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a friend of yours on, um, Mr. Etios. Um, I'm Jared's mate before he started modelling. And it's mad to see him live. Awesome. I don't know who that is, but... <laughs> I might get an angry message after this <laughs> saying, that was me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, Jared's details are in the video description below. Right, that was a well-timed question. So I've changed things around a little bit. I've put the grid on because I didn't think the answer would take that long. I'm going to take the grid off and I've put my black background up. It's two ways of getting a black background from a white background. Either grid the light so it doesn't shine onto the background or just throw a back <laughs> black background up. That's a lot easier. Okay, so I want to do that again, but this time I want to do it with a black background because it was a little bit grey, didn't really have the attitude. And I really want to get that very thin edge of light. So Jared, if you'd like to repeat the process. Here we go. Okay, so not going to change my flash settings. They're going to be exactly the same. Okay, let's have a little look. Yep, it hasn't got any better, is it? Then centre yourself up on the flash. Great, and then take a little step towards me. Okay, and then take another little step towards me. Just a little one, there we go. So the closer Jared steps to me, the less light that reaches him because it's thinner and thinner lights. So now we're getting kind of really dramatic. I may need to up the power because it's so little light reaching him, but we've got just enough. 
So I think I'm gonna make this a little different. I'm gonna pop this into black and white mode on my camera. Let's just do that shot again, but in black and white. Here we go. And I think black and white for this look. Yeah, that, doesn't that look better? Ignore the fact there is a soft box in the shot. That's pretty simple to remove in post-processing or better framing if I framed it vertically. But that's not bad. That works quite well. The only thing I'm not so keen about is this bit here. Can you see that Jared's disappearing into the shadows? So how am I going to fix that? Go on, Sam, there's a question. How am I going to fix this whilst I'm answering this question? So Joe asked, uh, what is your thinking and why are you taking your photo in profile? Uh, oh, I'm thinking, uh, Jared, just face, face me directly. Here we go, straight onto me, here we go. I'm thinking that if I don't, I'm gonna get this. Okay, so this is what happens if you don't do profile. And it's okay, but I'd need more lights on Jared to start setting up, you know, light on his face where this way, same lighting, just, you know, you can't see Jared's face and you can there, that's it. So uh, yeah, how am I gonna fix this? How am I gonna put light back there? I don't know if anybody had any thoughts. Yep, uh, we've got, uh, Matt said a reflector or second light. Mm -hmm. um, K Photography said fill lights or hair lights. Yep, it. that's a good start. That's, I mean, that actually covers everything, doesn't it, really? I'm actually gonna use neither of those. I mean, I am technically gonna do a reflector, but I have a massive reflector, it's called this big white wall. So we're going to use the big white wall of the studio as a reflector. Jared, if you'd just like to stand again, you're going to come take a step towards me. That's it. So by making Jared step away from me, uh, from the light towards me, but have his back to the white wall, what should happen is light hits the wall, bounces off and puts a little bit of light on the back of Jared. I'm going to go vertical so I frame this differently. Here we go. There you go, look at that, see? Boom, little bit of light. Tiny, tiny, tiny little edge light. All without having to actually put any extra lights up. Yay, simple lighting. Okay, so this is kind of thinnish edge lighting. We might be able to get it thinner. Jared, if you take a step towards me again. Okay, here we go. So as he steps towards me, so less light can wrap around and we have thinner and thinner light. That's where we want to be. Look at that, that's great. So that's a lovely thin edge profile. That kind of works. How can we then use this? I've got to really give this a bit of creativity. So we've got the, the attitude lighting. We now need a little bit of attitude from our model. Ready, ready, okay. Let's raise that up slightly. So, um, Sam. Okay. <laughs> well, Sam's got something to do. While she's doing that, I'm going to grab a prop. I'm going to give you a prop. Here we go. So we're going to get some attitude by giving Jared something to do. Because if you don't have anything to do, it's really hard to model. It really is. So just giving Jared a glass of whiskey. And that's certainly got a little bit on the bright side. Okay, let's watch that. Here we go. Okay. Jared, just take a little step towards me. Okay, not actually whiskey. If anyone's worried, again, Jared, you need to look straight ahead. This really is a profile. If he turns his head a little bit, I lose the light in his eye. It's a real fine difference. See how we're a little turn of the head versus profile. Hold the whiskey a little bit better, a little bit better. I'm so sorry, that wasn't what I meant. A little bit higher, because <laughs> it'll look better. Oh, oh live. <laughs> Those are the bits we take out in post. Okay, fantastic. Let's go horizontal as well. Awesome. It's not actually whiskey. If anyone's worrying, not actually whiskey. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's cold tea. Cold tea, Sam's very own brew. Okay, right. I'm not sure that worked. Hang on a second. We have a we have a little prop. Blow it. Let's go. What's going? It's kind of going. Oh, over here. Look at this. Okay, so Sam spent the last few days trying to track down a pipe. So this is a real pipe. It has a little incense stick cone inside and it's producing the world's smallest amount of smoke. 
I've blown it. I think I've blown it out. <laughs> that is that is rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> Hang on a second. We'll have another go at that. <laughs> we'll have another go at that. Okay. So while Sam's doing that, we'll try a slightly different pose. Do you want to just cross your arms for me? Because that's going to give us a little bit of attitude straight away. And again, you're going to need to look dead straight on. Take a step towards me. This is a game of inches. If Jared moves even a little bit, it makes such a huge difference. Spot the difference. Literally that, that like a little baby shuffle between those two pitches. And that's it. Okay. Got a little bit of hair across your eye. Can we kind of sweep that away? There we go. Fantastic. Let's go full length or at least half length. Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, how are we doing? That's better. Quick. <laughs> okay, one prop. Can anyone guess the smell? Because this is an incense stick. So I wonder if anyone can guess what lovely, lovely aroma it is. Fantastic. That looks so good. Well done, Sam. Great job with the incense. Let's go a bit closer. Okay, just twist the tip so it's more as if you don't put it in your mouth, but as if you, it was kind of that kind of direction. Got some guesses for you for yeah, the smell. Yeah, what We've smell is got, it? We've uh, got apple. Apple. White sage. Cherry. Uh, sandalwood. There's a couple for sandalwood. Um, awesome. Cinnamon. And rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So that looks really good. Let's just jump back a couple, see if we can find one with some smoke and I'll zoom in. You're right. There you go. Matt's got it. No. Yeah, Jasmine. Well done, Matt. There's no prize though. <laughs> just to know that you're right. <laughs> oh, I mean, what are the chances? Yeah, it was definitely losing its smoke as we go along, but the early ones are lovely, have that fantastic smoke. Now, we could drop that in post. Hey, we could use even AI and drop that in. But, you know, sometimes, if you're safe and sensible and careful, I'm going to put that out because that just smells terrible. That's kind of fun. Okay. So, a little bit of attitude just by moving our subject around and by moving the lighting around. I think we kind of did all right with that. So I think we should mix it up a little bit. Let's uh, do something a little bit different, but we're going to try and recycle the lighting because once you've got a light set, the temptation is just to keep going and going, but sometimes you only need to change a little bit to have quite a big difference. So my little bit of change is, tilt this, mind your head, here we go. Whoop drop it down so I don't have to reach so high, is basically tilt the light and put it up in the air. Now it needs to be, well Jared's six foot tall, so it needs to be about six foot three inches. I want it just out of shot. Well, the same height as Ben. Yeah, Ben, you could have been my marker, couldn't you? <laughs> okay, so you're too good. Don't do it right. We've got to do it wrong before we do it right. <laughs> So everything's changed around, so we really should take a meter reading. Let's do it properly. Can you take a yeah, of course I can. Okay, so um, Dave asked, um, he said, it's very rare to see you doing shoots with male models. Is there a reason you choose black and white for your male model? Um, no, I mean, we've done plenty of black and white with female models as well. It's just, it's more the lighting than the subject. Uh, if you saw the, the cover image for this session, that was Jared, and that was a colour image because it fitted in with that look. Uh, we've just filmed an Adorama TV video that comes out in three weeks, and that's in colour. So it's not the subject, it's the lighting. So in my mind, I mean, sometimes it is the subject as well, but by and large, I'm thinking about, you know, how does this light work? Does it need to be more contrasty? Does it need to have colour? If removing the colour simplifies the picture, then it's worth removing the colour. And of course, remember, I'm taking everything in RAW. You're seeing JPEGs, but I'm taking everything in RAW. So when I open them up in Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One, everything will be in colour again. <laughs> so bear that in mind. OK, good question, that. OK, where were we? Oh, yeah, overhead lighting, uh, f5.6. 
Okay, Jared, turn to look at me first of all. Just turn your whole body around, square on. Okay. It is, that doesn't look the right, the right exposure to me at all, but okay, fine. Let's um, adjust that. Okay, it is, it's just not really reaching your eyes. It's not good. I mean, if that's what you wanted, Nailed it, it's perfect. If that was the look you were going for, if you wanted a really mysterious, it looks a bit like a Pet Shop Boys album. You could be half the Pet Shop Boys. Yeah. <laughs> so if you wanted that mysterious, dark, moody, you know, it's kind of, actually that's, that's better than I thought. Here we go, that's, that's, it was not what I wanted, it was not what I planned, but it's come out okay. It's not, it's not really working for me. Oop. <laughs> so, Back to plan A. Yeah, go on, Sam, before I move on. You've had a few questions about your light meter. Yes. Yes, my light meter. Where's your new shiny one? Oh, I knew someone would ask. So my new shiny one is actually in a box somewhere. We had a few technical gremlins before we got going, like just before we got going, and I forgot to pick it up. And um, so I'm using the one that was close to hand. Uh, so it's, it, it's over there somewhere in a box somewhere. <laughs> it's around. <laughs> hey, it's live. A good photographer shouldn't be bound by their tools. They should be able to work with everything. <laughs> that sounds like a really good excuse, that, doesn't it? That sounds really good. <laughs> uh, okay, where were we? I was going to take a meter reading, F13. Oh, okay, hang on a second. Let's just change my speed. Hang on, when you pick up the wrong thing. See, I should have picked up the other flash meter. 250th, right. F8, close. With the light this close, there is a lot of very rapid fall off of the light. So a flash meter, if I move it a couple of inches higher, will give me a, a more a brighter exposure than if I move it a little bit lower. So I'm, I'm kind of riding the settings a little bit. Turn to face our audience, thank you very much. Okay, and then look up at the light. And then flick your hair out your eye. Fantastic. Okay, there you go. So, same lighting as we had, but I've just moved it around. Actually, I quite like that one. Hey, let's just let's, let's try that as well. Just look down at the floor for me. Okay, hold that. Now, light can't pass through solid objects, so I'm going to have to kind of ride my settings a little bit. Okay, Fernando's oh, on here nice. tonight. Hey, Fernando. Uh, it says, wait, 330 people watching, but only 142 likes. What? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, come and like it, everybody, please. That would be great. Leave a message. Hey, you know what? Like it. Well, other, there's something... Tonight is different. There's a first for Adorama TV for us. First live stream ever. You're outnumbered. We've got three blokes in the room and you. I wasn't going to me mention <laughs> the that. testosterone in the room. We should have been, yeah, we should be more, we should be more blokey. You see that ludic ludicrous display last night? Cool. Yeah. What was Finger thinking bringing Walker on that early? The trouble with Arsenal is they just try and walk it into the net. <sighs> How's that? Is that blokey enough? And that's enough now, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone doesn't get that reference, <laughs> it's the IT crowd, very funny. Oh, that's, that's it, it's the bloke as I can get. Okay, um, so that's kind of nice, I like that. Just take a little step away from the background, look up into the light, and we can go back to our little thin light. So it's the same light as we had before. All we've done is we've just moved Jared around. Super simple, recycling your lighting. Okay. Let's uh, change things up a little bit. So we're going to keep this basic setup, but change the background. You might want to step out for this one. <laughs> I'm going to change it. Okay, here we go. If you've got any questions, now's a very good time to get them in. Also, I struggle with the background. Whoop. And Chris is here tonight. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Anyone watching for the first time tonight? Let us know in the comments. Oh, if you're watching for the first time, we have better stuff, honestly. <laughs> we done. Okay, 
new background. Oing, wee. It's quite explosive, this. So I want to put a background in with a bit of texture. Or at least fake texture. It's a pattern, it's not actual texture. I'm going to give Jared somewhere to sit because it's all very well moving around, but if you can get your subject to sit down, it gets a little bit easier to get more precise lighting. Have a seat for me. Oop. Actually, loads of um, people watching for the first time live. That's great. Fantastic. Don't let this put you off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I want to try and use this background, try and make it a bit more interesting than just the black, because black's okay, but does it really work all the time? No, not all the time. And Jared's now a much better height for me, so bonus. Okay, I need to move the light a little bit. Oh, should we keep it there? Let's keep it. Let's live with what we've done. Okay, test photo first of all. Okay, so we've got kind of moody-ish lighting. It's okay. It's not great. It's okay. So let's add in a second light. Because of course, the more lights you add in, the better photographer you are. I mean, I'm gonna use three in a minute. Imagine that. How good am I? Three. God. So second light. Let's grab it and put it on the screen. This is becoming my, my new favorite little studio light. It is. The Flashpoint Explore 100 Pro. It will eventually focus up. Eh, maybe not. Uh, the Flashpoint Explore 100 Pro, it's a tiny little thing. It's about the size of a baked bean tin. Other tins are available. Snaps in like that, pointed at the background. Make sure it's on a different group to the key light. That is on B. My key light, of course, is on A. So Brad was just saying about the lights, the more lights, the more you can charge. That's yeah, that's Daniel's Daniel joke. Nelson. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't yeah. do that. Hey, Brad. <laughs> I think Brad's got a point, though. <laughs> okay, here we go. What? That's mad. And not in a good way, is it? I mean, mad in a bad way. We've got to make this better. This is where we're at. This is what I've got. And now I need to start refining this to try and make a good picture out of it. Yee, yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, so how can we make this better? Well, I think the first thing we could do is actually throw that background out of focus. So let's lose that lens and stick on a 45mm lens. So, which camera am I on? That one. Okay, so this, whilst I'm setting it up, you can have a little nose at the camera. 45mm f1.2. 45mm f1.2, it's not actually going to be at f1.2, I'm going to use f1.4 because that's what we do, isn't it? We get really fast lenses and then never use them wide open. So if I use f1.4 and I don't change anything else, I'm going to turn my flash off. Here we go. No flash gives me some picture. Now you might remember if you're here at the beginning, Jared was in total silhouette, but now I've got light contaminating my picture. So that's not good. I, I need to remove that and I'm going to remove. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> Hold that thought. Um, yeah. If you can all erase the last 30 seconds of your memory. All right. Undo the last 30 seconds. Thank you very much. It's a special feature we have on Adorama TV. That's better. I thought that was a bit too good. I was thinking, have my lights failed? What's, what's going on? That's what we're seeing with just the room light only at f1.4, 250th of a second, ISO 200. I need to get rid of this ambient light. And I'm gonna do it by using high speed sync flash, which means getting up my shutter speed from 250th to 2000th. Let's try 2000. 2000th of a second. Okay. Two thousandth of a second looks more like this. That's what we were expecting. Okay, that's pretty good. I can live with that. High speed sync, two thousandth of a second, f1.4. Same settings, haven't touched the flashes. My background is gonna become that much blurrier. Okay, that's, that's 
better, isn't it? That definitely gives some separation between the background and Jared, but my depth of field is so thin. But there's no light on Jared. What's going on? I thought this was supposed to be a lighting demonstration. It's a silhouette demonstration. Jared, just turn around and face the wall over here. So I'm turning Jared into the light. So if I turn him around, there's more chance of the light. Jared, if you're facing me, can you see any of that white softbox? I cannot. You can't, no, which means the light won't see his eyes. Jared, if you're facing this way, can you see some of the white softbox? Yes. It's right in front of you. It's not rocket science. Okay. Haven't touched the lighting, haven't changed the lighting, haven't moved the lighting, haven't got it in focus. That's not actually an a good thing, <laughs> that last one. Ignore that. <laughs> we'll take this bit out in the edit, Jared. It'll be brilliant. You wait and see. There we go. Perfect. Now the focus. It's all right. I think we're getting somewhere, but we're not quite where I want to be. I want to make this a little bit more dramatic. So a few things I could do. First of all, I want to make that background less intense. It's on 1 16th power. Let's take that background down to, it goes all the way down to 128, the little 100. So we'll take it down to 1 128. And you'll see how it changes the background. Same background, same light on Jared, but now that background doesn't overpower the image. Now it feels more in keeping. We certainly have some, some drama going on there. We certainly have a little bit of attitude with the lighting. We're going to try and get a little bit of attitude from Jared by rather than getting him looking there. Jared, you're going to look towards me, but you're going to look sort of past me a little bit. And I want you to have your, almost your back to me. So we don't normally do this. This isn't how we would normally photograph people. Just chin down a little bit. Okay, there we go, that looks more. Can you spot the difference? Looking straight up, looking over your shoulder. That's the only difference between those two pictures. Looking straight up, looking over your shoulder. I might just move the light just, hang on. Let's go big, Ben. Oh, that's not what I meant. Yeah, okay, it's like a clock, isn't it? Go big, Ben, no? <laughs> Getting a blank look from Ben, he's like, oh no, God, really? <laughs> okay. And the same again. Here we go. Looking back over your shoulder. Fantastic. I'm going to adjust the light on that one. So, for those that like to know lighting, I'm at 1 16th power on the key light on Jared. I'm on 1 128th power for the background light. And I'm in high speed sync. ISO 200, f1.4, and I'm at 2,000th of a second. Those settings won't help you unless you're standing here today right now, but they will at least give you a guide. But you know, don't dial them in and expect exactly the same results because that's not how photography works. It's maybe a little bit low. Maybe you want to just push the background light up a little bit. That's it. Just angled it up a tiny little bit. And we'll just see how that climbs the light up behind Jared's head. So there it's more sort of shouldery, and there it's more behind his head. Little subtle changes. Fantastic. We'll do a couple more like this and we'll move on. <laughs> High speed sync is pushing the little uh, Explore 100 to the edge, <laughs> but it did it right. That looks okay, doesn't it? That's pretty good. Okay, how are we doing? Any questions? <laughs> okay, fantastic. So if you're enjoying this, we're just over halfway through. So if you are enjoying this, don't forget to hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed to Adorama, subscribe to Adorama. If you've already pressed the subscribe button, don't press it again, just, just once. Okay, that's important. Uh, that, that's, and uh, check out the Adorama Events page, I should say. If, you're, if you enjoy live streams, remember to check out Adorama Events because there are loads coming up on Adorama Events. Yeah, Sam. Um, so 
uh, Jell or Jello. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce your name, sorry. Uh, do you always focus on the eye closest to camera? Yes. <laughs> yes, um, but, I mean, there's, there's always an exception to every rule. But as a general rule of thumb, um, let's, let's pop, pop my, uh, laptop, my laptop back on the screen, would you? Hey, there we go. Let's have a little look. Okay, um, this is the eye that I'm kind of looking at. It's not too shallow a depth of field because the way these lenses work is only a 45mm lens. But this is the eye that I'm keeping an eye on, <laughs> pardon the pun, um, where I'm happy to let this eye drift out of focus. But if I had to choose, if I had that shallow a depth of field, it would always be the one closest to the, to the, uh, the camera. When you get it wrong, it really shows. But it only shows if you zoom in like that. I mean, if your stuff's just going on Instagram, you, no one's going to really notice. And that's a sad fact. But as general good practice, get the eye closest to the camera to be in focus. Go for it. Uh, so Thomas asks, can you get the same results with an Octobox? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. That is a really good question, actually, Thomas. We could get pretty much identical results. So the thing about strip boxes, a lot of people are imagining, I bet, Thomas, you think that the light is coming down like this, yeah, in a strip, strip of light like that. It's not. It's going out like this, okay? If you can see the white, light is going to reach you. So, it, you know, this angle, yeah, that's, that's, so it's coming out in an arc of about 160 degrees, maybe even 170 degrees. If I put a grid on it, it would be much more directional. So although this is a strip box, it's not a strip of light. So I could replace this with an Octobox. The reason I'm not using an Octobox is, well, this is the one I had set up. It's small, it's light, and if I want to put a grid on, it will give me that strip effect that I'm after. We should do, we should do a live stream on things you didn't realize but thought were right. I'll rephrase that. Yeah. <laughs> We'll make it a snappier title. Yeah. <laughs> Things you thought were right, but were actually um, not quite what you think. Again, that's not very snappy, is it? Right. OK, so let's mix it up. Let's do something uh, different. Let's take this away. Let's fold this up. OK. And we could move Jared around, but we're not going to because we're lazy. We're going to keep him right where he is. We'll get you to move at the end, don't you worry. So we'll keep him on the chair and we're going to do some lighting. Actually, let's use the grid. Let's do it. Let's, let's as it came into the conversation. Oh, it's really heavy. It's really heavy because I've got a, a sandbag full of two peas at the bottom. Which is great. Yeah, feel, feel the weight of that. There we go. You can hold that for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> what do you put in your sandbags? We use 10 mil gravel, pea shingle, and coins. I'm really loving the coins. They're kind of a new addition. Thank you very much. That can come down here like that. So what I want to do is set up some split lighting. I want to light literally half of Jared. Oh, there it is. Half of Jared and not light the other half. That's the goal. When you're lighting for attitude, you can break some of the rules because this isn't lighting I would normally do. It's not going to be a family portrait lighting. <laughs> I'm not sure any of this has been family portrait lighting, but luckily portraits are more than, than just family portraits. Okay, so I'm going to get this close to Jared. Notice that most of the light is above his head height, something like that. We can take a flash meter reading, work out what exposure it is. I'm still working at f5.6. That's my target exposure. Jared, I'm going to pop this near your nose. Boom. F. I mean, it, it happens infrequently. Come on. Wait for it. It's worth it. There it is. Can you see that? Sort of. I nailed it. So that is. F5.6. I can't get it right in the light. Okay. Basically, my flash meter just tells me how much light is falling onto my subject. Not reflected off like a normal camera meter would, how much light is falling onto the subject. So it doesn't matter what colour skin they've got, what colour clothes they're wearing, whether it's reflective or absorbent. It just tells you how much light is 
falling on to that and it's more consistent and accurate. Okay, so uh, let's do it wrong. Let's, let's do what we've been doing. Look towards the other uh, wall. Okay, a little bit on the wrong side. Oh. <laughs> Don't show that one, Ben. Don't show that one. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> go on then, put it on. Go, go on then. There you go. It's not bad, actually. Do you ever get that? Do you ever get happy accidents? Things where you don't intend to take a photo or you don't intend to take that photo and you take that photo and you think, oh, that worked out quite well, actually. Honestly, that's how I learn lighting. It is making mistakes. The more mistakes you make, the more you learn. And I've learned loads. Just another way of saying I've really messed up. <laughs> OK, so let's try that again. What happened was I forgot that there was a light behind Jared and it was turned on, so it lit the wall. OK, taken the light away and turned it off and you'll spot the difference straight away. OK, so we now have a much darker shot. Let's take the picture in picture away just for a second, just, just to see the whole thing. No one wants to see us. There you go. We now have a much darker background. I mean, it's OK. As male portraits go, I've taken worse. I've done worse. I mean, if we wanted to just use that, just look over to the side again for me. I could. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, well, whatever, I'll live with it. I'm going to change it. I've just noticed something else I've done wrong. Can anyone remember or think about maybe something I may have messed up? <laughs> no one look. Keep that picture on, on, on screen. Nobody watch me change lenses. It's fine. <clears throat> got this. <laughs> OK, remove that from your memory. I'm, I'm glad we've got this immediate memory uh, removal tool from Adorama now. <coughs> OK, so yeah, I might have been on high speed sync. Um, but there we go. So that's OK. I'm trying to get that background darker. I, I don't want it maybe black, but I want it on the dark side. It's fairly dark, bearing in mind that's a pure white wall. And it is. OK, let's have the other screen. It's, it's this far away. OK, so yeah. Again, about the width of your screen. Can I do the joke twice? Will that work? No. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. It's a hard audience, really tough audience. OK, so <laughs> we're going to feather it away from the wall ever so slightly. I mean, ever so slightly. Jared, if you look at the softbox, can you see any of the white of the softbox? Okay. If Jared can see the white of the softbox, light will reach Jared. Can I see any of the white of the softbox back here? No, can't see any of the white whatsoever. That doesn't mean to say that the wall will go black because light will bounce around my small home studio, off the floor, off the walls. It will reach the background. It'll just be about as dark as I can get. Of course, I've lost a little bit of light on Jared because I've swung the softbox around a little bit, so I just need to adapt. Okay, so that's about as dark as I can get, but it's not quite what we're after. Jared, look at me. I'm not going to move the light, I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. Okay. Split light. See the difference? Okay, looking towards the light. Apparently, you can't see that one. There we go. And then looking directly at the camera. Split light straight down the lens with little, even a little catch light in there. So there's a little bit of light in the eyes. Very dramatic. Oh, sorry, Sam, I didn't see you waving the, uh, the card around. I wasn't I? waving it, it's fine. Uh, Michael asks, would having the softbox horizontal make a difference? Oh, I mean, yeah, let's find out. I like those sorts of questions where you can go, yeah, let's, let's do it. So this is why you get a strip box. OK, because the light is still going to beam out in the same width, although I've got the grid on, so it's limited. But now it's going to extend in front of Jared where before it wasn't going to. This is, this is why you have a strip box. OK, I'm also going to spin it because it's going to be in my... Oh, we'll leave it in the shot. Whatever. That's fine. OK, so here's what we got. Can you see this little triangle of light there? I mean, I'm, I, I'm loath to call it Rembrandt lighting because it's not. But that's effectively what we went from split lighting to something closer to Rembrandt. Great question. 
and that was simply by spinning the strip box around. It basically extended it in front of Jared's face, which means it can be a little bit more of an acute angle and just touch the cheek as it skims by. That was a good question. So split lighting, let's put it back and check it actually still is. Yeah, it is. Okay, the background. I've got split lighting in the, the subject, in, the, in, in the, the, the portrait, but what about that background? I want to have some split lighting back there. So we could do that in many ways, but we're going to use... We're going to use it. We're going to use the little Explore 100. Sorry, face detect is on it. <laughs> I'll turn it on. Can I turn it on? Can I do it without my face being in it? Yep, probably can. It's really hard to do backwards. Oh, it's gone off. I'll tell you what, I'll do it. Just imagine I've turned this on. You've, there we go. <laughs> okay. So it's on its own separate group. It's on B. It's on B, that side. Uh, I can adjust the power independently of the main light. Where should I put this light for split lighting? Back here? Is that going to split the background? I want one side lit, one side in shade. No, that's not going to work, is it? I could put the light over here, and then I can just light this side. Should we do that? Let's do that. That works. Half power is going to be way too much. We want to put it down to something more like 64th power. I don't know, I'm just guessing. OK, here we go, Jared. OK, what? I just changed, possibly changed the wrong light. What? <laughs> Did you get the feeling something just went sideways? Okay, that's, yeah. Not sure what happened there. Don't know, that's kind of weird. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, all my lights have suddenly decided to go, uh, almost like we've got a little bit of radio interference somewhere. Okay, there we go. Split lighting, it kind of does split, doesn't it? We kind of have lit side and shady side, but I would like the light to be on the shady side. Does that make sense? Because otherwise it just looks like the key light is accidentally lighting the background. And for that really kind of attitude lighting, you want to create contrast and sort of slightly jarring light. So it doesn't quite look right, but it is right. So I'm actually going to put it on the other side. So now it's on the opposite side in the shadow side, effectively. Let's try that. Okay, here we go. So still got split light on Jared, but now we've got light coming in the other side and it still doesn't quite feel right. Can you get that feeling? Can you get that it doesn't feel right? So let's make it better. Let's fix it. Um, so next month, next month we've got a um, Adorama's hidden gems coming up, if I can actually get them here in time on our live stream and one of them is likely to be this kit here this is there we go this is the flashpoint round head accessory kit for the evolve 200 forget that it, it's not for the evolve 200 it's for anything that it will fit so what have we got we've got barn doors we've got a snoo let's let's grab let's grab a little diffuser that thing right there so I'm going to pop that on the front just to show you what I've got. Which camera are we on? I can... Oh. <laughs> I got it. There we go. So a little magnetic attachment just to give it a bit of diffusion. And I'm going to put it in behind Jared, but point it in the direction that I want the light to go. Something like that. Fantastic. It's on 1 128th power, really low. Key light is on 1 16th power, middle of the road. Okay, and we're getting somewhere. In fact, I want to go even lower. That is as low as that backlight will go, but I want it lower. How can I make that background light even lower than it is now as far as illumination goes? It's too bright. I want to go one stop lower, but that's as low as it goes. What do I do? Help. I'll fix it and see if they catch up. <laughs> yeah. 
So barn doors were suggested earlier. Yep, so like that idea. Uh, snoot. Yep, change them a light mod, could do that. Move it away. Could move it away, that's a good answer. It would spread the light more, it would change the pattern of light, but that is a good answer. Okay, let's just take the picture and we'll see if they can spot what happened. Okay. So, that was my fix. Ignore the cursor. And that was before. Can you see the light on Jared is more or less the same, subject to uh, movement? But the background light got a stop darker. How did I do that when it's already on its lowest possible power? I changed my aperture from f5.6 to f8. I increased this light by one stop of brightness. I didn't touch the background light. So effectively, I've changed the balance by one stop, made it effectively darker than the key light. Just playing with the settings a little bit. Okay, bring that up. Did anyone you've go had, with that? No, you've had a few people answer. Um, uh, lower the ISO, filter, smaller aperture, uh, close up and increase the power of the key. But I like this one. This is Steve, ND filtery thingy. Steve actually is right. I could have done an ND filtery thingy. It's Steve Bryson. Oh, of course it is Steve Bryson, <laughs> isn't it? Hi, Steve. <laughs> He's also right. Could have done an ND filtery thingy. Um, on the light itself, um, but actually all of the other answers were pretty much correct as well. I could have changed the ISO, but that would have changed both lights. Uh, the only thing that really wouldn't have changed it would have been the, um, the, the shutter speed. But I could have changed my ISO and increased this light. I could have changed my aperture, which I did, and increased the light. But it's just changing the balance a little bit. I want to put a little bit of light in Jared's eyes just to finish this little bit off before we get onto the very last one at the end. So I'm going to put an extra light in because, as Daniel said, Anorama pay us by the light. So I now have the uh, Explore 300, the Explore 100, and the Evolve 200. I've got them all. Uh, and I'm going to put that on C, 256, 1128th. It's going to be low. All I want this light to do is put a dot in Jared's eyes, a little catch light, effectively. OK, here we go. Let's see if it works. It's thrown a little bit too much light in. Let's go one, one, 256. There we go. It's going to lift the shadows a tiny bit, but it's going to put the tiniest little catch light in the eyes. I probably could set up a softbox and make that bigger, but for live stream, that's pretty good. Let's take a few photos like that. Let's do it. The light strain has been uh, suggested. <laughs> Do you know, I, I tried to think about how I could get the light strainer in today. <laughs> <laughs> Good suggestion. We're doing Adorama's secret uh, gems next time out, so maybe we can, you know, between now and get, then get Adorama to um, rent the uh, light strainer patent off of us. Fantastic. Oh, you got super sauce. Hey, Ben is doing a good job, isn't he? <laughs> Awesome, Ben. Great. Love it. Is that his new nickname? Instead of Trainee Ben, it's now Awesome Ben. It, <laughs> it can be. I'm watching the background of Jared as well, because if I get it wrong, this little light sticks out of his neck. Uh, this happens so often. But I don't really want to put it any lower, because then it's going to affect the light pattern back there. So. That's down to me. That's me as the photographer. Jared just keeps doing his thing, and I have to watch out for that. So I really love Jared's hair because I can hide loads of stuff behind it. It's fantastic. Is that the right thing to say? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if, that, if that gets you hired because you have hair you can hide, hide a whole light behind, take it. That's great. <laughs> Okay, last one. Let's just do one last one. Just give me a little bit of attitude with the arms. Okay, look down with your eyes. Okay, and then back to me with your eyes. Okay. So Michael Chin, asked... Uh, um, square on, and then back up to me with your eyes. anyone happens to know what this lighting technique is called, where it goes light, shade, light, shade. I mean, feel free to, to fill in the answer. I'm going to call it double split lighting. That sounds good. I like that, double split lighting. The double split lighting technique. There's probably a name. Someone has a name for everything. Okay, so we've got one last one to do. We're going to go and finish 
with a one light dramatic setup. It's going to be the simplest setup. All you need to do this is a flash and some white walls. Actually, don't even have to be white walls, some walls. Let's turn all of this off. Oh, goodness, that is, oh it's got a sandbag on it. That is so heavy. So if you've got any questions for me or for Jared, here's your last chance. A checkerboard lighting seems to be the general. Double split lighting, I think it should catch on. Or the hoey lighting. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be so presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, isn't it? I mean, I could have worse things named after me. Uh, Shane asked, what software do you use to tether? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading this. Um, I'm using OM Systems uh, built-in software, OM System Capture and Workspace. I've got my glasses on. Does that say right at the end what I think it says? Please do not smell it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's probably a logical reason for it. I don't know if it'll come into focus. But on the bottom of my little rubber snoot here, it's, it, we can't really zoom in anymore. Uh, it, it, it says, please do not smell it. <laughs> Let's try this one. Here we go. Let's give this one a whirl. Oh, I've got my face in it. Oh. <laughs> this is impossible. Trust me. Get yourself one of these, read it, and hold your breath. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> That's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. <laughs> Why would you not want to smell it? I mean, why would you want to smell it? I suppose actually is a better question. <laughs> That's just nuts. <laughs> I don't know. Got a, you got any thoughts? Why? Why would... So Matt said, uh, don't put your snoot on the snoot. <laughs> Matt, spot That's on. <laughs> Please do not smell it. I mean, eat it, lick it. I could understand, you know, that makes sense. What's, I don't, I'm not sure I want to do this. Okay, anyway, so um, I've got the most high-tech stand resting against the wall. This is why we're using the Explore 100. It's a very, very lightweight light, um, quite safe. I'm going to rest that against the wall. I've put the rubber snoot on, which we are not smelling. And I'm aiming it down the wall towards Jared. But I need a bit of help with this. So I can't do this on my own. Uh, Jared, can you see through the hole? Yes, I can. You can see through the hole? Can you still see through the hole? Yes. All right, something like that. So if Jared can see through the hole of the snoot, can you guess what's going to happen? Light will reach him. Okay, so if you were here at the start and you're still here now, hey, well done, that's pretty impressive stuff. But you will remember I took one really important picture right at the beginning. Uh, if you didn't see it, here's what we did. And let's just set my camera up correctly. So we were at f5.6 or thereabouts at 250th of a second, ISO 200, yeah, 5.6, here we go. No flash gives us this picture, okay? No flash, no Jared, total control of the lights. I'm gonna turn the little uh, 100 light on and put it, oh, it's gonna have to be about half power. That snoot really takes away a lot of the light. Let's try coarse power. And let's see what we get. Okay, that's pretty good. Whoa, boom, look at that. Fantastic. That's a good guess, actually. I could even turn it down a tiny bit. Amazing, that is so good. I could probably drop it down a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Not much just to lower that circle down. So I put Jared into the corner because it projects the light in a line and then hits the opposite wall and goes back to being a circle. I can definitely turn it down a touch. I've moved it. We're down to one eighth power, which is pretty awesome. Okay, Jared, you're gonna lean back against the wall. You're gonna give it some attitude. Time to do a little bit of the acting role. Attitude it up. Fantastic. And I'm going super wide with these. I'll try and go vertical as well just to mix it up because I want to see that light coming through. That beam of light is so important. No, these are going to be horizontal pictures. I'm relying on the camera's face and auto eye detect to keep me in focus. I'm so... You can't see me. I'm, I'm, I'm way over here, way over here. You're fine. You're not missing anything. It's fine. 
Okay, fantastic. I'll include the light because I can always take it up and uh, take it out. And there we go. That is lighting with attitude. How awesome was that? That worked really well. So lots of different ways that you can create a little bit of attitude using your model to actually show the attitude, but also using your light to enhance that attitude. Believe it or not, that's a, that was a whole hour. That went quick, didn't it? Fantastic. Hopefully you found that useful, possibly enjoyable. If you have, and you haven't already clicked to Adorama's subscribe button, click on that subscribe button. Click on the like button because that really helps. And also, of course, come and watch us again. We are back on Adorama TV. Well, we're back in four weeks time right here on the same channel, but we've got our new events channel where there are loads of stuff. And I was looking at what's coming up and there's so many good things. I'm not going to pick them all out. There's, there's just loads. Have a look at Adorama events. And of course, Coffee with the Creatives here on Adorama TV with Seth every Wednesday is so worth a watch. So do check that out as well. So I'd like to thank a few people, Sam, on the awesome comments. Thank you very much. Thanks for I mean, all your comments, everyone. Were they it's awesome? Great. Yeah, they were really awesome. Really <laughs> funny as well, some of them. Thanks Thank for you. asking questions. It's great to see so many new faces here. Um, first time watchers. So thank you. Come and see the next one, 7th of December. Uh, that would be great. Thanks, everyone. You can't hear him and you can't see him, but Ben did an amazing job. Trainee Ben was fantastic. Well done, Ben. Thank you very much for stepping in. And of course, give it up for Jared. What? Jared's details you'll find in the description down below. Go follow him on Instagram. And if you're looking for a UK model, male models, tricky to find, Jared is fantastic. And he's available. That sounds weird, but it's true. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.